welcome to TechStream's Tech Talk, where today we're going to be talking about intelligent document processing, more specifically, best practices to unlocking more value from unstructured data within your organization. We're really excited to have you today and look forward to the conversation. For today's topic, we're going to go in more depth in what intelligent document processing is, talk about some different offerings from both uh, AWS and uh, some tooling that has been built on top of inte intelligent document processing from TechStream. We'll also give you a quick demonstration, talk about some case studies, and then how you can get started with intelligent document processing within your organizations so that you can unlock the power of information. Our speakers today are myself, Troy Allen, I'm VP of Cloud Services here at TechStream. And then joining us from Amazon Web Services is Stephanie Pace, who is the partner principal for AI ML, or Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning. Welcome, Stephanie. How are you doing? Great, thanks. It's uh, quite a privilege to be here with TechStream talking about the solution you've built on top of AWS. Fantastic. Well, we will look forward to, to sharing it in, in more detail, but I think what we'll do is kind of set a foundation for our listeners today on what intelligent document processing really is. So when you look at all of the business that's out there, no matter what vertical you're in, whether it's medical or legal or education, accounting, real estate, business drives on information. And a lot of that is in the form of general content, you know, the back office uh, files and documents that really are utilized for patient onboarding or legal contracts or uh, educational documents that are shared to, to students or for training applications within your organization. And, you know, even in terms of accounting, all of those invoices that have to be processed on a regular basis or tax documents, all of that makes up a key critical information that drives decisions within organizations. And having access to that, knowing the value of the information that's in there very quickly is important to making good business decisions in a timely fashion so that you can continue operations and innovation within your organizations for what you're trying to accomplish today and in the future. And when we look at content and data, we can really break that down into three general areas. So the first is structured data. You know, this is the historical data that we may collect from applications as an output. Uh, a lot of times that's used for data analysis and mining. This might be information that is coming from catcher services or data input. You know, if we think back in, in the old days, these are the, the green bar reports, uh, you know, from accounting and finance that people have pertinent information that they used to have to manually scroll through in order to find critical elements uh, to generate reports and things of that nature. But nowadays, this is also coming from databases or Google Sheets or, you know, uh, CSV files in Excel. When we start looking at semi-structured data, a lot of times this is data that might be coming from forms or well-formatted documents or even from emails or tweets or you know uh, information held within standardized folder structures. There's some level of structure to it, but there's still a lot of pertinent information that requires some input in order to categorize and capture and understand so that you get true value out of that. You know, some of this may be coming from inboxes. Uh, so if you are looking for latest invoices that you have received from a particular client, you have to uh, quite often do a search against your inbox or do a search against corporate folders where those are stored or know a particular folder name and structure in order to get to your 2022 uh, tax forms. And the channels that this information can come from tend to be unstructured. In other words, information can be coming from multiple areas and they tend to be somewhat text heavy. Unstructured data really is information that can come from any source, any place. There's not really a lot of boundaries that constrain it in a, in a lot of regards. 
and knowing where to put that, where to store it, what type of retention rules need to be applied to it, or even how to get key information out of those documents can be a burden. And, you know, this can come from surveys or industry reports, data analysis, but quite often it's coming from very heavy text or voice recordings or images of videos, you know, where you've got notes or uh, general office documents like POs and resumes, or uh, maybe it's rich media such as like, well, today's record. Uh, webinar as an example. There might be pertinent information that you would like to automatically glean from this down the road to support other business operations. And knowing what information in there can be very difficult to, to make qualitative uh, information about it. And so that's the type of content and data that we're really trying to address and bring better understanding to. And if you look at it across the industry, you're going to start to see some similarities, uh, you know, whether you're in banking or you're in capital markets or healthcare, there are certain types of information that you have to get the details out of the documents and the files and the, the data that's being captured in order to uh, make decisions upon, whether it's SEC filings and bank lending and credits or uh, legal contracts and the media and entertainment. Um, legal contracts may also apply in capital markets or insurance. And insurance, you may have claims forms. So there's these different types of semi-structured, structured and unstructured sources of information that traditionally has taken a lot of time for individuals to go in and capture that information. And what intelligent document processing really does is to enable you to glean information through intelligence and through automation. So as an example, in human resources, you can automatically determine what type of employee documents have been scanned, maybe capture critical details out of forms or uh, do image management for uh, files that are coming across from an HR perspective. Or in marketing, you may have a lot of digital assets that you want to automatically categorize and understand what's in those digital assets that people can quickly get to that to perform their uh, job operations or contract processing and file sharing. Same thing with legal. You know, contextual contract processing is very critical. How do you know who needs to see the portions of a particular contract? Well, a lot of times that's driven by the textual information that's in it. May require different groups within your organization to have eyes on those. And so intelligent document processing really is that automation to gather this information to get it to the right people at the right time so that they can make the right decisions and actions based off of that. AWS has a lot of tools that allow you to, to start taking advantage of intelligence and automation. And Stephanie, I, I know that AWS has done quite a bit to, to kind of bring those elements together. I was wondering if maybe you could walk through some of those with us today. Sure thing, Troy. So to give some context to the audience, uh, you said that AWS has a number of services or tools. Um, we classify intelligent document processing as a, a framework that is comprised of a number of AWS, AI, and ML services. So these services include things like Textract, Comprehend, A2I, Sage, Maker, Ground Truth. And those all together in um, a, I'm gonna say portfolio of microservices with partners such as Techstream, then allows customers to replace manual and rules-based document workflows. And that just helps them ingest, extract, and then harness that structured and unstructured data that you were speaking about earlier. I'm going to say the market demand at the moment we're seeing is that legacy document processes are simply not nimble enough for today's corporations. And there is a lack of ability to harness the information that is gathered from things like legacy OCR to be able to make intelligent business decisions and validate business outcomes. 
So the traditional legacy OCR is time consuming. It's very often manual, um, tends to be very uh, human dependent on around things like checking uh, input. It, and that as a consequence doesn't scale uh, very well. And the thought process is that in creating an IDP framework and a solution through TechStream, we're able to put together these microservices in a easily consumable solution that allows customers to shorten decision type uh, cycles, serve more customers, and create a much faster document processing workflow. Now, the hard work of stitching all of those microservices together is actually done by, by TechStream. Um, but ultimately, we are very, very pleased that we can work together to offer that to end customers. So just looking at previous um, legacy systems and, and how we have moved beyond that, traditional legacy systems were very unable to scale rapidly, very often on-prem, uh, didn't have the uh, agility that comes with a cloud infrastructure. Very often it was an incredibly high barrier to transformation. So just simply implementing a document processing workflow was incredibly clunky and, and um, onerous. And very often the technology wasn't really at the point that it was intelligent enough or intuitive enough to really gather reliable information. So very often there had to be human safeguards in place, which we have now gotten to the point with various technologies that we're able to put those safeguards in place that tag and flag, but don't require ongoing human intervention. We like to believe that the benefits of intelligent document processing, and it says on the slide AWS, but we like to think more broadly than that you know, in being customer obsessed. We are going beyond OCR. We're starting to become far more intelligent around things like image recognition, um, context, key value pairs, um, natural language processing, rather than just your traditional um, OCR, which stands for optical character recognition. That allows us to roll out document processing workflow solutions to our customers a lot faster. It reduces the total processing cost and time involved. And ultimately the ability to extract and ingest structured and unstructured data and uncover business insights allows customers to harness that data far more effectively than just simply doing document or OCR capture. One of the things that became very apparent when we started seeing AI, ML and intelligent document processing go mainstream was that customers often didn't have the skills in-house to be able to stitch these uh, services together. That tends to be complicated. It requires ML and AI expertise, and not every customer has that capability. So we are incredibly proud to be partnering with partners such as TechStream, who help customers implement AWS um, IDP and those microservices while giving a white glove approach uh, to customers, which is what we're really driven by and is a leadership principle for, for AWS. Well, and we're very excited to be working with you and, and the teams there and, you know, engaging with our clients to, to provide uh, success across the board with that. And, you know, when we uh, take a look at how to solve the, the document understanding or intelligent document processing, you know, we, we have to look back at where people used to do it. And, and I think you said it well that sometimes the, the on-premise methodology or the old way of doing things was a, a block to being able to modernize their environments. And a lot of times they just didn't know where to get started. You know, so in the old process, 
you had to find all of the documents. You had to figure out how to collect them. You had to, to scan them. Maybe there was not the capability to OCR it, or if the OCR was very limited. It couldn't do some of the, the things you know, that uh, Stephanie had indicated as available through uh, Textract uh, with more extended feature sets. Uh, quite often, this information was stored in multiple places. People just didn't know where to go to. And when they could find it, they had to you know, really take their own notes on it or do manual categorization for the, the key insights. And being able to manually reinspect every time some new data was required became intensive. But quite frankly, the, the bottom line was people didn't know how to find the information. They didn't know where to go to look. Um, and it was very time consuming. And, you know, when they looked at, you know, why they, they weren't modernizing or going somewhere else, uh, they, they did have to contend with multiple repositories. Um, you know, they, they didn't know how to go and find the information that they wanted to collect, centralize, and move. But quite frankly, there was a lack of governance. Um, and uh, what we are finding a lot of times is that going through this process and having tools that can give you true insights into your documentation allows you to start applying appropriate governance because you know that the content and the details that you're working with to know how it should be applied. You know, if you take a look at things such as, is there HIPAA information or is there personally identifiable information help within this document, you know, does special handling have to be put on it? Um, you know, trying to figure out how to still get around that manual process. And one of the beauties of IDP is, you know, a lot of that aspect can be taken out of the equation. And, you know, traditionally they had minimal automation. They just didn't know what they could and couldn't automate. And a lot of times it's not knowing what you can do becomes a hindrance. And that's part of the reason, you know, why we're talking today is to maybe give you some insights some places that you can start to automate and reduce that labor intensiveness of just getting true understanding within your content. And, you know, as Stephanie was talking about, TechStream has been working very closely, uh, you know, with Amazon and different product teams to, to come up with a, a framework and a tool set for handling intelligent document processing. And we realized that Organizations have content across the board, you know, whether it's in legacy enterprise content management systems like the Documentums or the, the Web Center products of the world, or, you know, they might be in file seek and share uh, services. Uh, you know, these are your online tool capabilities like Google and other, you know, where people are spinning up and, and sharing documents. Uh, it might be on corporate drive. So, really, with all three of those to, to start with, they tend to be built over time from an ad hoc uh, perspective and there's not a lot of governance you know people just spin something up throw stuff out there and they really don't have good visibility to what it is um, or it could be coming from you know say s3 containers uh, you know simple storage within amazon where uh, reports are being generated and stored but people still need to get to it and, and have some details about it or you know, maybe you're using Amazon Work Docs as a, a central content repository. No matter where that information is coming from, we wanted to be able to provide a way that we can ingest that and look at information. You know, really, is it more textual based in nature, or is it more rich media? You know, is it graphics? Is it videos? Uh, or you know instead of just graphics is it audio recordings things of that nature and so we kind of take two paths with this the first is if it's textual based in nature we want to to pre-process that information um, so that we can glean in from uh, the details about that content you know whether it's using contract and then maybe run it through comprehend or you know uh, maybe we've got to do some translation on it to put it into appropriate language sets but once we discover the contents of the document, then we can start to analyze that. And part of our solution is we've built a library that is extendable for you to start that categorization process as kind of our initial release into IDP. So you can establish business rules of the 
types of information you expect that might make this a uh, master service agreement or you know it's a particular type of contract or it's uh, a particular HR form or it might be a uh, particular invoice from a particular organization um, and then the same would, would hold true for the rich media perspective. You know, what, what's the, the file format? Are there particular objects that we're looking for in an image to depict what it is? You know, maybe you're an organization that uh, does maintenance work on um, HVAC systems, as an example. So being able to identify a particular HVAC system of work that's being done or in process so that you can use that as validation for billing purposes. Um, you know, those are different situations where that comes into play. And to have that business logic where we recognize what's there and then start to put some categorization. But as good as intelligence is, there may be times that the system thinks it could be A or it could be B or maybe A and B in terms of how it's going to be managed um, or you know, what the information is related to. And that's where we take advantage of augmented and uh, artificial intelligence or A2I, which allows us to take all of this, make some recommendations, and then have appropriate individuals within your organization look at it, see what's being recommended, and make that final distinction of, you know, how it should be captured, stored, uh, and categorized within the system. And then finally, where's its permanent storage location? So we've funneled everything in, we've done some work, we've gained some understanding of it, we've done some categorization, but now where do we permanently want it to go? You know, so if I recognize these are MSA contracts, I may have a particular place in uh, simple storage, uh, you know, Amazon S3, where I want it stored. Maybe I have a structure within Amazon WorkDocs or Maybe I want to push it to an existing repository that I may already have. So this gives you a tremendous amount of capability to quickly ingest uh, either single files or in a batch mode, do the processing, and then store those in locations where people know how to get to that information and have all of that contextual detail that you can then apply more and more intelligence on top of. Now that we've kind of walked through a, a little bit of an idea of what intelligent document processing is, let's take a look at it in action. And you know, we'll, we'll walk through a couple of, of uh, scenarios here. Now, the first one um, is all around categorization. And so what I wanted to give you a quick view of today is how you could very quickly create new categories to, to start describing information as it comes in, and maybe key indicators. And this is a very simplified view, but I think it'll get the concepts across for you. So as an example, I, I might have ship construction. So maybe I'm in a work in a station that is in construction or, or building. Whether it's ships or buildings or you know doing road work construction, doesn't matter. The principles are going to apply to it, and I rely on on-the-job photos and videos as confirmation or maybe as a, a status input input to you know how my projects are uh, progressing, or maybe it's uh, issues related to the job site. So what I can do is I can create a category for the types of information I want. And in this particular case, I can name very particular objects that I expect to find in these types of pictures. So for ship construction, I expect there to be a ship. I expect there to be you know, some level of water or shore. And you can put as many of these in as you want, just as a, a quick example. Now, for more textual based information, let's take a look at an MSA contract. I might be looking for keywords and phrases, you know, for agreement, party, master, third party, and you can get as complex with these as you want. One of the use cases we'll talk about a little later is actually looking for identifiable information in forms to drive the, the coding of these files so that they could very quickly be processed to other organizations. And so this is a, a way that you can start to set that up. Now, once you have this uh, you know, configured within your system, um, 
you know, I mentioned before, we can ingest from a multitude of areas. And for for demonstration today, I'm going to take WorkDocs as an example. So Amazon has the WorkDocs product. It's a great content management tool, and it lends itself very nicely for incorporating with intelligent document processing. So as a, a user, if I want to add some documents that I'm not sure about, I don't want to take the time to inspect them and figure them out. I just want to get them in and start that automation process. I can go into a designated area within WorkDocs and then very quickly go to my uh, wherever I've got these files stored and either drag and drop them into the system or I may want to to have an automated routine where I'm looking at particular drop areas. An example of that might be I have invoices that are getting emailed in on a regular basis or you know maybe I've got a uh, SFTP site that people are uploading files. I can point to that and ingest from there as documents are added or as data is added. Or, you know, maybe I'm going to go in and pull information out of databases at a particular time. So it's really limitless as to how you want to set this up, whether it's driven by humans or driven by automation to capture new information as it comes in. Now, what's happening behind the scenes is all of these documents are being processed. In some cases, we might be doing some conversion work on it, like the, the DOC files. I may want to also create PDF versions for other use cases. But what's going on is that intelligence is kicking off. And I just received an email notification that in one particular case, there is a uh, some work that I need to do. So in this one, there's a WorkDocs image classification task. I'm going to go ahead and start working it. And one of the pictures that I had dropped in, as we can see, could be a ship construction or railway construction. Well, if you remember on the ship construction, I said there's got to be water and there's got to be a shore. It picked that up. But also for my railway construction, I was looking for rails, railway, train tracks, things of that nature. And so the system wanted a user to confirm which one it should be. So in this particular case, I'm going to tell it, oh, this is a railway construction, and I'm just going to go ahead and submit that. Now, in the meantime, I've also had another one that's come in. This is another document that I had processed, and we can see here that it thinks that it, it could be one of three different types of documents based upon the rules that I'm looking for. So I see that I've got uh, MSA, I've got Statement of Work, and I've got Database. Well, there's 122 key identifiers that it could be an MSA contract. And as a human I'm looking at, I recognize, yep, it is an MSA. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and submit it. And then as part of that as well, there was another one that came through that it could have been either an MSA or a statement of work or you know a, a documentation about DynamoDB. And so it, the system just wanted us to, to verify. So this is kind of that human workflow where I can go through and make those assignments. Now, what happens on the back end is all this gets processed and some of it is automatically tagged, doesn't require a human. Some of it does require a human. Uh, based upon how you have established your rules and what are your thresholds for how strict you want that evaluation criteria to be. So we'll see that I've still got one that's out there that's processing, but in the meantime, I'm going to go and look at my storage area. And if I go into the statement of work, this is the one that I had just submitted, that unknown document type, it recognized uh, that it needed to be inspected. As a human, as part of the workflow, I told it, yeah, it is a statement of work, and it got stored there automatically. And now I can click into it and see it. But I mentioned before that we also are creating a PDF version of it. So here I've got the, the document. I can download the Word document, do some work on it internally. I've got all the capabilities in this case that WorkDocs provides, whether I want to edit online 
or edit in, in my native tool. But let's say that I needed to get the PDF version, a non-editable version of it, to be able to send out to someone else. And if we were to go back and take a look at our shipyard as an example, so if I go into ship construction, here's the unknown image that we validated earlier of that ship. We can obviously see that it is a ship on a waterway. By the way, this one was automatically tagged and moved. If you recall, I did not have to go through this in the workflow. This one, it was sure of itself enough that it should be marked as a ship construction. Whereas if I were to go look at the, the one that was just done for the railway construction, which is the one that it did ask me to, to validate. Again, this is one we looked at before. This one had enough that it could have been both that asked for the human, where the one that we just saw a moment ago automatically processed and it was done. So this is just a high level view of the intelligent document processing and how you could very quickly drop several documents in, some based upon your rules and your level of confidence of the automation that you want to assign thresholds for. You can you know, ask a human to, to validate it or if it reaches a certain method, like with the, the ship construction image that you saw, the system has a very high confidence. It's going to automatically categorize it, put it in the appropriate location, and capture all of that object detail that can then be used for other reporting and other uh, services down the road. So hopefully that gives everybody just a, a quick view into IDP in action. Now, demos are all are well and fine, but how are people actually utilizing tools like this out there in, in the world. Well, one thing that we can do is we can take a look at, um, say, family and ch children's services. You know, one organization is saving a tremendous amount of, of uh, money through automation services, where, you know, if they take a look at a, a particular day in the life of a, uh, a field person with uh, family and children's services where they're going in, they're working with the families, they're talking to the children, they're collecting information from doctors, offices, from schools, from juvenile courts, and so forth. There could be up to 72 unique different types of court documents and different types of main hearing types that need to get associated. And in the old days, what they had to do was to capture all this information about a particular child or family. They had to read through the documents, figure out what type of court document or hearing type it was, go and create a barcode correctly for it, insert those in between each of the, the reports, and then they had to scan it and then hopefully it would be um, identified correctly and then stored so that when the, the court system asked for those as artifacts of evidence, it can then be sent over to them. So it is very heavily processed, and quite frankly, it took time away from the families and the children that you know these field resources could have been working with. So what we did was we looked at that and realized that there's a lot of information that could be used in the automation for tagging and applying the appropriate filing codes to these simply by understanding the types of court documents and hearing types and the information that drives business rules as to what is different from hearing type one versus hearing type two versus hearing type three and allow the, the field representatives to collect all the information, do a single scan, not have to worry about putting the barcodes for identification, let the system handle it. One of the key things out of this was it removed a lot of human error because people might misread or may not be looking at the right table information to get a value to, to make that association of you know, which hearing type or what type of court document it is. And what was estimated was this, this was going to save about 32,000 labor hours per year simply by running through this process. And if we take a look at, you know, um, and 
another use case dealing with rich media files. Uh, you know, quite often cities and counties and so forth, they're always in the news for one thing or another. And they needed to have a particular way that they can collect video files and images and uh, rich media so that when news agencies made a request for that type of information, they could very quickly get to it. So, you know, quite often they'll get asked, hey, we're looking for the mayor at this particular event or at this particular location. Can you send me whatever you have because we're doing a, a showpiece or a story or whatever, you know, might be the need for that. And that was very time intensive because people had to go and, and open it up. If somebody didn't name the file correctly or they didn't have a good structure to put it in, um, and it was also prone to error because they may have said it was the mayor when it really it was the chief of police. And so there's a, a lot of ways that even when somebody did attempt to categorize or, or to tag these files, they may have done it incorrectly. So one of the things that we did was to use that IDP engine in order to automatically detect not just objects, you know, is it at a park or is it at a, a playground or does it appear to be in a courtroom, but to do facial recognition so that we can pinpoint, oh, here's the mayor in a photo and there's also a senator and there's also the chief of police all in this one picture and to make it very easily accessible for somebody to search for the mayor's name or to search for the senator's name and then maybe even a location. In this particular case, we were picking up geo location detail that was embedded in the images to, to help drive that searchability. And you know, this was saving hundreds of labor hours per year uh, just to facilitate the simple need of, I've got media services, you know, news networks that are requesting files and media um, just so that they can do their reporting. And if, you know, there's already talks of being able to expand that to, hey, we want to be able to uh, look at new construction, road work, or, you know, maybe I want to uh, extend this to doing photos of intersections where maybe there was accidents or, um, the, the traffic lights aren't working and be able to detect those. So it, it starts to grow and provide a foundation that you can expand upon. And then the last use case that we'll take a look at, um, you know, outside of, of the uh, uh, state and local or, or federal space is maybe in healthcare. And this similar things that we've already talked about today can be used in almost any vertical, right? So in healthcare, one of the challenges, they spend a lot of time and money to extract sensitive information from claims forms and all of the associated attachments that go with them. And this could be very labor intensive. You know, looking at it in order to code information correctly for payment of service, uh, you know, can, can be very intensive. And so utilizing tools like TextTrack, where that we can take that digitized claim form and process it, uh, detect tables, detect forms, make sure that we're adhering to security and compliance as that information is going through, really helps to, to reduce that overhead, that very manually intensive process that they were doing before and automate that. And it really allows organizations to quickly get in, extract the information and do this for thousands of claims each day. You know, so the, the first two cases that we were looking at, you know, uh, the first one, I think, was 32,000 hours that was saved. The, sm the second one was a much smaller case. But now you get into things like in the healthcare and, and other large scale where you have these transactions that are in the thousands of the day. This is where the intelligent document processing and automation really begins to shine and has a very positive impact to your operational costs and increase of efficiency. So, you know, a lot, the next logical question is, I understand what intelligent document processing is. I see how it works. We've talked about some examples. 
how can I, as an organization, get started with this? And you know, quite often, people just don't know how to unlock the into the in, intelligent document processing and, and to really get the value out of it. So there's nine things that I would say that you need to look at. One is you need to understand the current environment and your capabilities for mining unstructured data. Know where your pain points are. What are you really trying to accomplish? What's critical information that you need that you're not getting? That's going to help you to build an appropriate business case. Um, you know, for what needs to be analyzed and who uh, needs to do that work and who's going to be the benefactor of it. All of this is to help drive a, a case for you to, to go from the old way of doing things and to adopt a, a more intelligent, automated fashion uh, to, to reduce that overhead, that manual work. But with everything, automation is great, but you don't realize how much of an impact automation is having unless you could put some type of measurement framework against it. So again, you have to know where you're starting from. How long did it take you to uh, analyze and to code a thousand human resource uh, applicants on a day? Uh, versus what is a, a measurable point that you need to get to to reduce that manual intensive work, free up your resources, let automation take it over. So it's really establishing where do you want that return on investment? You know, what's that, that tipping point that you can start to realize that value? You also need to make sure that you're analyzing your data sources and categorize your inputs. Um, and this is where the, the automation and tooling can really help you to, to get it. But it's a continual process. So, you know, you need to start to identify, you know, the, the going back to understanding your your data analysis, what is real pertinent information? Um, you're going to capture a lot, but to really get the value, you're going to have to continually work with models and fine tune it so that you can bypass what's not relevant and keep what really is relevant. And going through this process, you're going to find details that you never knew existed that are very critical. So you're going to be pleasantly surprised, but then you're also going to be able to weed out the unnecessary data for a particular goal in mind. And, you know, as we talked about earlier, the, the common barriers to success. Um, you know, don't let the way that you used to do things be that barrier. Know that there are options, there are frameworks. Um, you know, AWS and, and partners like TechStream, we've built these models to help you get over those barriers so that you can very quickly get to that success. And it comes down to making sure that you're utilizing the appropriate tool set. You know, AWS is Every day, it seems like they're releasing something new. They're, they're constantly innovating with the vision of what can they do to, to make business better um, you know, for their customers or to, to make their, their work lives easier. And knowing what the tool sets are and how to map those to what you're trying to accomplish is, is very critical. And that's you know, where we can come in and, and help with that. And then you need to be able to, to assemble that, build it to scale, and automate. And that's where you know these frameworks that, that we're putting together can really help with that. Once you understand all of that, then it's really taking it to the next step. What's the action implementation plan? And what we would like to introduce is a very valid next step for that. And that is, let's do a pilot. Let's take a look at these types of services and in a very quick amount of time, see how intelligent document processing can really help maximize your business operations, give you better insights into information, and get you started. And so we've put together a way that we could do this in a very short amount of time. Um, you know, where we come in, we take a look, we give you a good overview of intelligent document processing, what it might mean to your organization, look at the data sets of information that you want to identify. All that's part of configuration, show you how you can quickly set it up, establish your categories and your users, and then let you work with it. 
and start putting content and images and files and go through the process. See how well it works for you. You know, what is what does the workflows look like? You know, how quickly can you get to information? You know, do you need to tweak your categorization rules a little bit to fine tune what you're looking for? And then at the end of this is to do a review and do a project planning. You know, now that you understand how IDP can be used in your business, what are the next steps then to take that into a realized production environment? Um, you know, what other things do you need to bring to the table for that? So, you know, that, this is an offer that we're doing for uh, Intelligent Document Processing or IDP is to do a, a week-long pilot, um, you know, with, with our engineers and to collaborate with you and, and with your AWS team to get this, you know, from discovery into a POC go live in a week and allow you to start leveraging those business rules and data sets. So, Stephanie, I know we've covered an awful lot in, in today's meeting in a very short amount of time. You know, what what additional thoughts or, or maybe key things that you think that, you know, our uh, listeners today should be considering, um, you know, when, when they start thinking about intelligent document processing any final thoughts that you might want to interject on that? Yeah, Troy, the the main thought I would leave uh, the audience with is perception is not reality. There is this perception that AI and ML is an incredibly complicated area and an incredibly complicated field. And I think there are ways to implement pockets of IDP or AI ML services that can really add massive business value. And I think in some ways TechStream helps to make AI and ML more accessible through these type of IDP solutions, through the production pilot, through that POC opportunity. But ultimately it is not the heavy lift that it was, let's say, five years ago. So I would really encourage people to start thinking about how they start to implement this in their businesses and gain the value for very little heavy lifting and certainly a partner that is invested in their success. Yeah, it, those are definitely some good points. and. I, I know when I've talked to clients as well, and the moment you start talking about intelligent, you know, artificial intelligence or machine learning, their eyes get big and it, it's new. And, and quite often something that's new that they haven't dealt with before can be intimidating. And I think you're spot on. It doesn't have to be. It, it's not as intimidating as people you know expect. And a lot of that is because the, the AWS services and tooling are designed to help people along those ways. And then you add on top of that the work that partners are doing to, to continue to make that, you know, something that can be achievable and, you know, that truly can be owned by the business without tons and tons of developers. It has come a long way since the inception of artificial intelligence. And, you know, I, I definitely see quicker adoption and growth in those areas because of the work that AWS and, and their partners have, have done to make this much, much, much more approachable than it used to be, say, five or six years ago. All right. So, you know, undoubtedly, there's going to be some questions as you're you're reviewing this, and we do want to make sure that we can be available for you uh, to to answer anything. So please feel free to reach out to us, and we'll we'll help facilitate. You can either reach out to your AWS uh, representative, whoever that you work with for your AWS services and and your environments. Or feel free to reach out to TechStream directly. We can be reached at info at techstream.com or visit our website at www.techstream.com. And then also the, the phone numbers that we have listed on the screen. So with that, uh, we'll close out today's session. Thank you all very much for listening. And Stephanie, thank you again for participating today. 
uh, always a pleasure. And I think you know the the information and insights that that you brought, um, you know, are, are going to uh, have a lot of value to our listeners as, as they have watched this and and hopefully go back and rewatch it a number of times. Well, thanks, Troy. It's a it's a privilege to have been on this webinar with you, and to the audience, thank you. Time is a uh, non-renewable resource, so we appreciate you spending it with us.